2007, 2008, a lot, a lot of things happened that changed my life completely. I used to live that life that every other child would admire in life. It, was, it hit me when I found myself sleeping in a police camp as an IDP. I didn't expect one day I'd find myself an IDP in my own country and all that. Um, as I've grown in Kenya, um, I think one of the most turning points was the, the attempted coup. And uh, that was very tough for my family because we, we faced the corruption and stuff from the GSU um, because uh, we were five minutes out of the curfew time and so we were being harassed. Yeah, I was, I, I was born in Congo, but um, I've been based in Kenya for many, many years, for the last 15 years. And for many years I've been working in groups, marginalized groups, people who do not really have a voice in this society, working more in a therapeutic way. I want to thank you for your help. Who I Am Who We Are is an initiative taken by two people, uh, Wambui Kamiru and myself, Xavier. We are both artists affiliated to the Kuna Trust, based in Nairobi, the Center for Visual Art, one of the most prominent centers in the region. Uh, the project Who I Am Who We Are, it's now barely one and a half years. Uh, we are trying to find and uh, to know the Kenyan identity, how you perceive yourself being Kenyan. So who I am revolves around two main activities. The body map is now where you are out, the outline of your body is being drawn. Then you fill it with what you want to say or what you want to pass out through the drawing. It gives you that relaxing mood. You feel like if you're stressed, you just scribble. You don't have to be a cool artist to do it. So we've been exploring these different identities in different forms through artworks in the form of these life-size paintings, the narrative accompanying each of these artworks. And this is what this particular art did for me, because for many years I'd keep saying I'm a Kenyan Asian or I'm a Kenyan Indian, um, but I could never really say I'm Kenyan Kenyan. And after this, I truly came to believe in my heart that I am Kenyan first. I have no other place that I would go to. You have life-size paintings which are made during a process of three days and the people who participate, who create these artworks are a sample representing that particular community. And we, we bring these people together and they create this beautiful artwork for about three days. And then the second one is the silent room, which is in a way much larger public participatory approach. The silent room, it's a, a sensational room where you stay alone, uh, which would actually take three to five minutes to give you the, to make you understand yourself, speak out. Any Kenyans on a voluntary base can go, they will sit, they will find a chair, they'll find a lamp, but they will answer to seven questions. Are you Kenyan? How are you similar to other Kenyans? How are you different to other Kenyans? What makes you proud about Kenya? Okay, simple things like when there's a match, a football match, how people get united and sect up about it. And I know if that is there in that small level, it can even be translated in a national, national wide level. What does not make you proud about Kenya? How do you see yourself in five years in Kenya? Where I'll be is mostly determined by the state of the country. 
if there's peace and security, I can be very far. But if I'm feeling a bit insecure, it could also limit me to some level. What does it mean to be Kenyan today? Are you Kenyan? Am I really Kenyan? And this is what this particular art did for me. So for me as, as a Kenyan, I want to see things happening. I want to see real action taking place. Critical artistic expressions can grow you personally and that with this can actually really bring about lasting, deep social change. This is very much what we believe as the Heinrich Böll Foundation. And being Kenyan also means that we have to address many social, uh, cultural pressures, political pressures. In this world of globalization, to solve our joint problems, to overcome our joint challenges, I think we need to understand each other uh, better. We need to understand each other very well. And I think to understand each other, we need this kind of exchange. We need to kind of question um, who we are, um, who we are for each other, what can we do together. You know what this project has taught me? It has taught me that we have to find solutions for our own problems. The African problems being solved. We all have to address them and we have to clean this house that's gone dirty. We have to roll up our sleeves and just clean up. You, you know, Kenya needs you to move ahead. Heinrich Böll is, um, was a writer, a novelist. But he wasn't just a writer, he was also a critic, he was a voice encouraging every single person to be part of the change that people wanted for Germany. The change that we need as Kenyans and those people who live in Kenya is a change that has to start with us. I dislike how pessimistic we are about our country especially on social media. I am tired of just reading the same old headings in the newspapers. Um, I want to see things happening. News is negative. We never celebrate our country. Let's look at the good stories and tell them. So you know what? I love this country. I think it's beautiful. Let the world know that Kenya is beautiful. The phoenix is a very strong bird which, which everything happens to destroy it. And so we're my view is that we're like a phoenix and we need to rise from the ashes. Um, so that's what describes this painting. From being burnt the house, stolen, and started from scratch again. And now here I am as university student. I thank God for that and at least I can give a smile.